Hey, remember when I said this? But there's also a chance you don't notice the much needed performance boost many expect, possibly leaving players without a game changing update to the performance. I was wrong. You know how Star Citizen's AI performs like trash? Or how you'll sometimes see characters randomly freeze and then glitch 40 feet away? How about when objectives don't load correctly in your mission? Systems lagging behind, ships randomly exploding, glitches on glitches, Star Citizen has always dealt with a lot of instability. But Star Citizen has always also been hosted on just one server. Not only does server meshing allow for more players, locations, AI, and general things to do to be implemented, it can drastically reduce the effort needed to run the game, allowing AI to run smoothly and the game to perform mostly as expected. And this has already been proven in public player tests over the last two weeks. So to get up to speed, here's a look at the actual significance of server meshing, the problems it still has, and how this is the optimization a lot of people have been waiting for. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. One of the most important parts of an online game is its ability to transfer enough data in a small enough amount of time to keep the game updated for its players. On our own computer side, we may be pursuing the upper reaches of 8000 FPS to get the smoothest power washing simulator experience. But on the server side, games tend to target lower values of tick rate. Generally 30 or 60 Hz is a good refresh rate for servers on a game that doesn't have to have hyper competitive FPS gameplay. This frequency is commonly referred to as the server FPS in Star Citizen. You can see this value by going into the command prompt in Star Citizen and typing R underscore display info 3. When you do this on the existing game, you'll notice this value sits anywhere between 2 frames per second and 8 frames per second. And that's on a good day. We talked about this in my last video. Object container streaming has always allowed for players to move around the game, only really requiring the objects around them to be loaded in. While this works well for smaller player counts like the 50 player servers we had back until 2022, and it allows player performance to improve as it did when this was implemented in 3.3.5 back in 2018, as you load more and more players in, inevitably, more of the game needs to be loaded simultaneously which ends up bogging down the server and lowering that server frame rate anyways. This is why the game performs so poorly right now. When you load into a fresh server, things generally run pretty nice. The AI are fairly responsive, player services are working well, and the server FPS is usually a bit higher. Not very high, but better. But as time goes on, more players fill in and the frame rate drops to the point where things just don't work anymore. Besides the content, which has been starting to increase over the last year, and the outdated systems from the 3.0 era that are beginning to be replaced with 3.23, this server performance is the most noticeable problem keeping players from enjoying what already exists in Star Citizen. While the flashiest and most noticeable application of server meshing is to allow ships to jump from one star system to another by transitioning servers, splitting one system into multiple servers is the real benefit of server meshing that we're looking for. Expansions to the game are great, but until the game can handle the density of assets and locations that make these star systems worthwhile, these new systems may fall a bit flat. So you'll be happy to hear that in the last week, more than 700 players were able to load into the Stanton star system running on six different servers with a stable 30 frames per second on the server side. Mrs. Tomato and I were able to take part in it, and I can confirm it is fantastic. So let's talk a bit about the details of what server meshing is doing on a one system basis. So the actual server meshing test over the last week was the first public test, meaning players had the ability to record or stream it. We were pretty busy here. Between regular work and ongoing housework here, I was only able to hop in and experience the test for a few minutes. While I didn't experience anything super significant, I can say the performance I saw was incredible. Even in Orison I was seeing 30 frames per second on the server and 60 on my own PC. My own server had less than 100 people on it, but around the server there were many more playing. And while the experience was good at first, I did still notice the AI kind of looping around a little bit at some times. Now the star system was loaded with several different layouts. First, the test was for 200 players, which was relatively easy. From there, the player count was boosted to 400 players and reportedly worked fairly well. 
The player count was then raised to 800 players, a ceiling CIG seemed to be looking for, as performance began to degrade quite a bit. That's not to say this is the limit of the tech, just the limit of this first wave of tests. According to everybody I saw in the testing, performance of the game greatly improved with server meshing. That being said, missions would possibly not persist when transitioning, a small hiccup was sometimes visible during the transition, and some other existing features showed clear signs of being unoptimized and generally not made to work with this system just yet. Disappointing because there was a lot of work prior to this going into making systems ready for it, but I'm sure these are things that will be figured out before 4.0 is upon us. It is safe to say that server meshing still has a long way to go, even after 4.0 comes out, but it is certainly improving the game in major ways performance-based in just this initial reveal. And AI being one of the biggest concerns proved to be much more challenging and on par with a normal FPS game during this period, but many of the actions and traits we saw at CitizenCon are still not present. According to senior AI designer Zach Priest, additional features will be added to the FPS experience to help balance it out, make it more fun, and get rid of some of the problems that unnecessarily extend time to kill. Meanwhile, the combat traits and specific AI strategies we've seen before like at CitizenCon will start to sneak their way into NPCs in distribution centers starting in 3.23. So by the time server meshing is in our own hands for the AI to be working a lot better, the combat experience should be a lot better as well to match them. But it's not all perfect. This technology is still a long way from supporting tens or even hundreds of thousands of players on a live basis. It leaves us with quite a few questions like how many players should be in a given star system, or what happens when too many players show up in one space, what's the upper limit for the amount of servers that should be in a star system, and the most important, which we won't know for some time, given the economics of running a bunch of servers, the speed of which data can sync up across the globe, and the number of players that will play this game, how many shards will there be? Will there be one regional shard? Multiple? And how can you switch between them? All these questions and many more will be answered over the coming years as the system matures and CIG begins to work towards dynamic server meshing, the ultimate version of the game's backend services. But it's pretty clear that we're still in the weeds in terms of figuring out what this actually means for the game. Performance is taking a huge step up. A lot more features and gameplay will be able to be implemented. The player count is definitely increasing, and the game has a more definitive path towards a commercial release. But just as with all things in Star Citizen over these years, a lot of this is being done in real time. We don't have an answer for how far it will go or what it will take. So while performance is getting better, we'll still have to wonder just how far this goes. Ultimately, this is a major achievement for the company. It's not a world first or an industry defining moment, but for Star Citizen, one of the biggest blockers of forward progress is functional and in testing. And to be quite honest, these kinds of achievements are the things that this game can point towards as actual progress towards the finished goal. It's not just a career like mining, or a couple of new weapons, or of course, a new ship. This is a paradigm shift for this game, an actual defining moment for where this game goes from here. It's a major moment for the game, and one we'll definitely be keeping a close eye on as it continues. Don't expect to see this live anytime before the end of the summer, but keep an eye out for news, updates, and advancements in the tech by subscribing here or over on Space Tomato 2, where I just covered this development in a podcast with Hybrid V Audio, you know, the guy that watches your landings, along with other podcasts featuring a new guest every week, some of whom you might recognize. We got some deep dives into the history and development of Star Citizen as well, and gameplay on our newest channel, Space Tomato Plays. And while this was a look at the performance improvements coming from server meshing, you can learn more about what the technology actually is and how it fits into the overall vision of Star Citizen in a previous video I did just a couple weeks ago. Whatever you decide to do, I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.